Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Get Healthy You TV question and answer. It is a monthly occurring event uh, where Sam and I come live. Sometimes we add another trainer in and we answer questions. We also often have a theme, right? We where do. we, you know, want to talk about one thing in particular. And I got to say, an hour goes by so fast. At least it does for us, it right? Does. Yep. <laughs> Maybe not for our production team, <laughs> but it does for us because we are so focused on all of your questions. So welcome in. Hi, Sam. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Got a little chilly in here today, but well. <laughs> I know. And we we'll both decided up. to wear bright blue today to yes. kind of like brighten your day. Um, so we took a little survey in our Facebook group. For those of you who are Get Healthy You TV members, I hope you are a member of our private Facebook group. It is probably the most active most positive, most informative group I've ever belonged to. Absolutely. On Facebook. By far. Um, our members help each other pick workouts. They encourage each other. Mm -hmm. They share their highs and lows of their days and things that are going on. Um, I honestly, to be honest, I, I feel like I know some of our members personally, <laughs> like they're my friend because I know so much about their <laughs> life. So um, you are my friends, you guys. Um, but in the Facebook group, we asked, what do you want to talk about in April? Yep. And overwhelmingly, snacking won. So I, I guess, you know, snacking is a big topic. It's a big topic. Yep. I don't think of it that much. I don't know why, but it, yeah. it is probably one of the most common ask questions to our website. Yep. So today it's going to be all about snacking, healthy snacking, should you snack, when do you snack, all that good stuff. However, we also take any questions. So, you know, Sam is live on her computer right now. She can take anything live. We have pre-asked questions. Yep. We do the best we can to fit it all in. We have our Bipro Protein Powder sitting right here because they are our sponsors today. We have been partners with Bipro Protein Powder from the very beginning of Get Healthy UTV. Quite honestly, I've been partnering with, uh, with Bipro for about 10 years. Yep. Um, I'm obsessed with their protein because it is a clean protein. It is whey and it's very clean. Um, and so we're going to talk about protein shakes today because that's, you know, a big deal. So when we get to that, I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit more about Bipro. I've always got a coupon code for you guys because we have a constant coupon code for our um, mem members and non-members. If you're not a member, anyone can use it. Let's get right into the question, Sam. Jumping right in. Um, let's see. So we have best way to overcome late night snacking, specifically between the hours of 8 and 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the hardest. You know, when people talk about intermittent fasting and they're like, hey, does intermittent fasting work? And I'm like, yeah, because basically what it does is it tells you not to eat <laughs> at certain times. It's basically calorie restriction. So, you know, Jokes aside, it really doesn't matter the timing of your intermittent fasting. I mean, there's no magic to 5, 18, 12, no magic. So I'm, I'm just here to tell you that now. But most in, intermittent fasting will stop you eating in the evening. And if you're following the rules of your intermittent fasting, you're not going to eat late at night. So that's one thing. But how do you stop it? You have to stop it by not starting it. I mean, quite honestly, it is so easy. You are not alone. Late night eating is the number one problem people have with calorie consumption. Yep. They'll do good all day. And then, you know, you come home from work or maybe you were working at home, but you were busy and the kids activities were crazy. Maybe you didn't get dinner because you were driving to dance and soccer and whatever. And then you kind of let your guard down. Like all of a sudden you take this deep breath and food is emotional. We all know that <laughs> food is not just nourishment. It should be but it isn't because food is also celebration. Food is a ritual. Yep. Food is holiday. I mean, food has a lot of amazing meanings, but your body just responds by saying, I'm just going to sit here and eat. And typically late night eating is mindless eating. So don't eat out of a bag. Don't eat out of, out of a box. I mean, I am the worst with popcorn. Like if I open a bag of popcorn, <laughs> I can literally eat five servings. It's ridiculous and wrong, but it's very easy to do. Don't eat out of the ice cream container. Don't eat out of the nuts like just taking handfuls. Yep. You need to portion out what you're going to eat. And I'm not saying you have to become some weirdo who measures all their food. Yeah. But if late night snacking is your problem, measure something out that you're going to eat and then stop. Also just stop. Yeah. Like this, like for me during the week, if I'm not going out and having a social event, I'm at home. I finish eating at like seven. I have dinner. Yep. I do have like something sweet every night. Like I am a sweet freak. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll either have some yogurt with some berries or I'll have like trail mix with cacao chips or I'll have some Halo Top, which is like a protein ice cream or I'll, I'll, I'll do something that is um, kind of sweet right after dinner. And then I just stop eating from like seven till seven. Yep. So that's like my 
intermittent fasting. Um, but if you do need a snack, if you do come home, like I have had moments where you come home at nine o'clock, you still haven't eaten the proper dinner or whatever, portion out what you're going to eat and then step away. Drink tea, drink water, drinking things will keep you from eating. Yes. Last thing I'm going to say, chew bubble gum. I, I mean, I know it's crazy, but like keeping your mouth busy <laughs> while you're not eating absolutely can help. Um, a lot of people are ask, are actually asking about like teas. Um, what kind of teas do you drink late at night um, that either can curb or are there some that are a little bit sweeter mm -hmm. um, to kind of get that, you know? So some tea, you know, you got to be very careful and make sure it's a caffeine free tea because some tea oh, does yeah. have caffeine in it. <laughs> so I, I always do caffeine free. I really love chai tea because it is that like sweeter flavor. Some people hate chai tea. Um, I really like mint tea. I like the flavor of mint. I'm not really big into like peachy or strawberry. I know there's all different kinds of teas. I don't love that. Um, and I don't love like Earl Grey or any chamomile. It's just kind of boring to me. So I'm a chai tea girl at night. I drink Organifi. So Organifi is a brand that's out there in the marketplace. You can go to their website, Organifi. Um, they make really healthy products like powders, greens, reds, and then they make this gold, which is like an evening tea. It has no caffeine. It's kind of a sleepy time tea. It has turmeric, um, reishi mushroom. Mm, does it have reishi yeah. mushroom? I think it has reishi yep. mushroom. I know that sounds disgusting. You cannot taste it. No. <laughs> it's cinnamon and chai, and it's super soothing. And I've been drinking that for like three years now. And honestly, like I don't get colds the way I used to in yeah. the winter. I think it's really good for your immune system. Yep. I love that. That to me is like a sweet treat. It's very sweet tasting, but it has like one gram of sugar. I love chai. Um, those are kind of my go-to. I, I drink this brand called Good Earth. Yeah. It's a Minnesota brand, but it's also national. I yeah. mean, you can buy the tea bags and I, I buy their wild child, it's called, um, which is chai. So, and I, I also love their sweet and spicy. That's just my go-to. But tea calms me down from eating, too. Yep. I actually recently, so I drink the Organifi as well. Love that. She introduced it to me. Isn't it yummy? It's so good. Like <laughs> It's expensive. You only drink one uh, thing a, a night. Yep. It ends up being like um, like a $2 tea. So you have to kind of. Right. You kind of like have to savor it a little yeah. bit. Um, but I actually, I'm not a big tea person, but I found a blueberry um, aloe. Oh, and I was like really hesitant to try it. It is so good. It's like a little treat. So most tea is not most tea bags are not that expensive. So if you yep. find something you like, yeah, try I just it. try it. Keep yeah. yeah, keep doing it. Um, let's see. Will you be doing more fast walking video uh, walking videos without equipment or floor work? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so we just put up a free one on YouTube. It's fifteen hundred steps. Sam and I did it. it. Took us about fifteen minutes to indoor walk, 1500 steps, kind of a fun free workout for any of you who are non-members. And insider information for those of you who, who are Get Healthy UTV members, our next, is there a next workout that we're putting up? Um, I think it's, well, it's either the next no. one or the next one after that. Yeah, so it's in two. Okay, so it's in May. Um, we are putting up a new 5,000 step workout. Yes. 5,000 <laughs> steps indoor, you get half your walk in this one workout. Do the workout twice and you've got 10,000 steps and it has no equipment. It was super fun. Yeah. JC and Sheila um, joined me on that yep. walk. Yeah. And we were just, and I'm telling you, I was like, I was definitely glistening by the end of that one. So, yep, they're coming. Um, Chris, we have a ton of questions. Everyone's kind of jumping in a little bit late and they're asking if you've talked about the Bipro protein okay. powder. Right Pop now. In and um, so thanks to Bipro. We love working with them because I really believe in their protein. I have tried every protein powder on the planet, <laughs> probably. Now, here's the thing. It is a whey protein. So if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, you don't and consume whey. There are a lot of good products out there. You need to go to your store. You need to probably buy the individual packets and try them because there's pea proteins. There's I really love pumpkin seed protein. You can buy that on Amazon. It's just literally ground up pumpkin seeds and it's so rich. So there are a lot of really good vegetarian vegan options out there. But whey protein has always been known to be really good for muscle recovery. So if you do eat whey, this is lactose free, gluten free, uh, by pro. Um, however, if you do have a lactose intolerant, I would test it. Yeah. Um, test it out. But whey protein in general is good for muscle repair. So you have something called the branched chain amino acids, or let's just talk amino acids in general. So amino acids are what make up protein. Our bodies, I think there's 20 amino acids. Um, 11 of them are body makes. 
Um, nine of them are essential and you have to get from food. Your body doesn't make them. So if you are eating animal products throughout the day, if you eat certain vegetables, there are some grains that have some protein in it, you're gonna get those amino acids into your system. The branched chain amino acids, BCAAs, which are leucine, isoleucine, and valine, those three are the most important for muscle repair and muscle synthesis. So after a workout, you've broken down those muscles. Protein doesn't make muscle. Let's just get that clear. <laughs> it feeds muscles. You have to do the work to make muscle. But then you want to feed your muscles. Those branched chain amino acids are very important. And the most important one is leucine. And BiPro is certified for sport, has yep. always been known to be super high in lysine. Um, you get more lysine per serving in Bipro than any other protein powder I've ever seen. So that's how I started using Bipro. Second, no stomach problems. I have tried so many protein powders where you get bloated, gassy, um, burpy. Like I know it all sounds disgusting. <laughs> it, it and it's from all the different things that go into the protein powder. Bipro is very, very clean. I'm going to read these to you really quick. So I use the Elite the most. This is literally just whey protein. There's nothing else in it. And then this is the Bold. A lot of people like the Bold. Like my kids who are in their 20s like the Bold. I'll tell you why. It has added healthy fats to it. So if you aren't a person who's going to blend up, like I'll take my Elite powder and then I add my fruit and I'll add my healthy fat. I'll do my own chia seeds or mm -hmm. I'll do my own avocado. And that's why I love the Elite. But like my kids, I'll use my son who's 29. He, after a workout, all he wants to do is take this and mix it with milk, with or, water, milk or water, shake yeah. it up and drink it. So then he's more of a bold person. The bold is also a little cheaper than the um, elite. But let's just look at what this is. So I'm just going to quickly read this to you. First of all, you're getting 2.5 grams of leucine. I don't know of any other protein powder that gives you that much in one serving. It's 90 calories. And the ingredients are whey protein. Okay, if you get the unflavored. So there's unflavored vanilla and chocolate. Unflavored tastes like nothing. Like It tastes like nothing. So the unflavored has always been my favorite, but I do love the vanilla. Now, if you get the vanilla, there's also some stevia in there and some, um, and some vanilla flavoring. So that's the elite. When you get to the bold, not only are you going to have the whey protein, but you're also going to have some added extra um, healthy fats to it. You're going to get, did I do that backwards? No, here's the bold. No. Um, oh, well, I brought the unflavored. See, when you bring the unflavored for everything is literally just like clean protein powder. It has zero flavor to it. Yep. A lot of people like that. But if you get into the vanilla and the chocolate, there's a couple added extra um, healthy fats added to it, your MCTs. So that's going to keep you satiated a little bit longer. Um, so it really depends. It's all easy, digestible. It's also, so this one, this one, I guess what you'd say with the, with the fats, it's like fast, slow metabolizing. It's going to kind of last you over the long haul of the morning or afternoon, whenever you use it. Okay. Chris, certified for sport are asking if there's sugar in either. No most. sugar. So, uh, in the elite, there's zero sugar. And in the bold, there's zero sugar. There's no sugar. If you do get one of the flavors, vanilla or chocolate, it is sweetened with stevia. So just be aware of that. That's a, obviously a natural sugar. You could argue it's a little processed mm -hmm. because when they put it in foods like this. Anyway, that's the whole thing. So do you need protein powder in your life? No, you don't. You don't. I mean, you can <laughs> eat protein. In your life. Do you like protein powder? Then yes, use it. I use it because that's my breakfast. Yep. Do you still do a shake? I do, um, but I use like plant-based. Um, yeah. The whey just doesn't sit, sit well with my stomach, um, but I do every single day. So, you're a, yeah. a pro so a lot of people love a protein shake for breakfast. Like for me, after my workout, I get my healthy fats, my yep. fruit, my protein powder. I'll mix some nuts and seeds in there. I'm so satiated. I love it. It's also been known to be an afternoon snack for me. Yeah. Um, so my kids, when they were playing sports and living at home, Protein shakes were like, our blender was like <laughs> on overdrive all the time. <laughs> so you have to decide if it fits into your life. I throw the uh, unflavored in pancake mix all the time. Like when I'm making pancakes, I make protein pancakes. I've been known with when my kids were little to stick it in spaghetti sauce and yeah. bake with it and do a whole bunch of different stuff. So there are a lot of recipes online at Bipro. Okay, last thing. <laughs> the bold is on sale. So if you go to buyprousa.com, and did we have the banner up already? I, I don't know if she's had it. It has been up, and I'm okay. sure she's going to flash it right across. Our production, they're the best. <laughs> See, I wasn't even looking. Okay, there we go. See, they're so paying attention. So Buy Pro Bold is on sale. All you have to do is go to the website, and the one-pound um, bags are on sale for 25% off, just so you know. If you want the Elite, use our Get Healthy U TV coupon code, okay? So our coupon code is buypro20. You get 20% off. GHU. You can do that on any bag. 
anytime. So make sure you keep that coupon code because that's always for our um, our community. So that's what I know, people. So that's there's our lesson in protein powder. Thank you, Bye Pro. We love you. <laughs> we do. Um, Chris, still along the lines of um, like protein shakes, does it hurt to have a protein shake in the evening? No. I mean, see, here's the thing. A calorie at 6 a.m. is a calorie at 6 p.m. There is no right way. People get so into rules and diets have rules. And you know why diets have rules? Because rules work for people who need structure. So like if you're following Susie's uh, belly diet or whatever, and Susie says, don't eat after this time or do this or do that. And you follow those rules. She's basically calorie restricting you and or giving you, uh, you know, helping you eat the right food. So that's what diets are about. But like if evening is a good time, you want something sweet and you still need to get some protein in your day. Let's talk. We'll talk macronutrients real quick Yeah. Um, to help people kind of understand how to divide your day up. So if it fits better in your day at night than morning, perfect. Mm -hmm. Does not matter. Do we have any questions about macros or no? We um, have one, actually. Do you think counting macros is a good way to lose weight? Okay. So your macronutrients are your protein, carbs, and fats. Um, there And water is, you know, something that everybody needs. But everybody needs protein, carbs, and fats. You can look at, so I always say look at food two ways, two cues. Always look at the quantity of food. Those are calories. And then look at the quality of the food. So the bottom line is, I don't care. I don't care what you think, calories matter. Calories in, calories out. If you eat too many calories than you expend, you will gain weight, period. That is how it works. Yep. It's not rocket science. If you deficit calories, you can lose weight. That's how it works. So you do have to be mindful of the quantity of food that you put in your mouth. Now, the quality of food is also super important because that's what nourishes your body. If you wanna be healthy, if you do not want disease, if you don't wanna get sick, if you don't want high blood pressure and high cholesterol and high triglycerides, high blood sugar, if you want to sleep better at night, if you got like all the nutrients are important. Those are your vitamins and minerals. But here's the thing. Those are your micronutrients. Those are in your macronutrients. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to count your vitamins and minerals. If you're eating a good array of protein, fat, and carb, you should get all the micronutrients you need. Now, you live in Minnesota and it's dark all the time. You're probably not getting enough vitamin D because... A, there are not a lot of foods that have vitamin D. Yep. So then supplement with vitamin D. If it's a, you know cold and flu season, maybe you want to take a little extra vitamin C because it's no problem to eat a lot of vitamin C. It's water soluble. You pee it out and it's yep. cheap. So I mean, there are some re really good reasons for supplementation. However, food matters. So you don't want to cut out one food group because when people say, oh, I don't eat carbs, don't eat any carbs. I'm like, okay, well then I hope that you are paying attention to your profile because you might need to supplement with some vitamins Absolutely. and minerals of some sort that you are missing out by skipping that food group. But if you eat a good mix of those three, you're good. Now, how do you know what you want to eat? It's personal. Mm -hmm. Like my macro split is usually like 60 carbs, 25 are, are um, 20, 20 yep. kind of. Yep. I'm at least 50% carbs, some, some days 60. And so it's either 50, 25, 25 or 60, 20, 20 for me um, in terms of the way I eat. Is that the right way to eat? No, that's the way I eat. There are people who eat way more protein. Mm -hmm. There are people who eat based on their, maybe their heritage yep. or what kind of foods they like, eat a little differently. So there's no magic mix of your macros. It's just another way to think about food rather than just saying only calories. Now you're thinking like, well, am I getting a good mix of proteins, mm -hmm. carbs, and fats? Fruits and vegetables are carbs, which is why my carb count is so high because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a rabbit. <laughs> I can eat a lot of <laughs> fruits and vegetables. Um, so that's, you know, um, important. But protein, people always ask how much protein per day. So they really say about a half a gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh like 140 pounds and you're trying to get about 70 grams of protein a day, that's about what I do. Um, and that's adequate. Now, if you are like really heavy lifting, if you are training for a marathon, if you are somebody who does like serious competition sports, maybe you play tennis four times a week, like super intensely, like, I don't know. I don't know who you are. You might want to up your protein a little bit. Some of the very um, like professional athletes are going to eat a couple grams of protein mm -hmm. per pound of body weight per day. Yep. Right. So yeah. <laughs> I just see my sister like constantly with the protein and she's somebody that is constantly like working out for what she does. So, so her sister plays on the, you know, just on the U S Olympic <laughs> hockey team, you know, just 
no, just. But it's so interesting because her, <laughs> like, she's really kind of dialed in um, this year. Like, you know, she's getting older, right? She's 25, but she's not 21 <laughs> like she used to be. Um, and she lately has been so dialed into her eating. And it's just very, it's kind of fun because I've always been into that. But um, it's kind of fun to see, like, even between her and I, it's very different. Right. Because um, you have different needs and she's absolutely. working out and differently. She's working out. Yeah. So macros are a really interesting way to think of things. And then you can divide your macros. If you go, and I'm this is a very quick math lesson, so, <laughs> like, take it for what it's worth. Talk about it later to yourself. But um, if you're going to say, okay, I'm going to eat 2,000 calories a day. I'm just using that. Okay. And 50% of those calories are going to come from carbs. That means 1,000 calories are going to come from carbs. And then if you say, okay, there's four grams of carb per, um, okay, now I'm losing, yeah, per, but, per calorie. I, I can't think right <laughs> like, now. What's okay. happening? So like if we have a thousand divided by four, that's 250 grams of carbs I'm going to allow myself a day. It's yep. just a different way of thinking. Instead of counting the calories, I'm going to say 250 grams. Okay, well, I get, you know, 25 grams from this fruit and I got 40 grams from this fruit and I got three grams from that vegetable and I got, and so I can decide how to divide my carbs up for the day. It's just a different way of thinking. And you can throw snacks in there, no problem. You can be a three square meal eater, or you can be like a small meal eater where you do three meals plus two snacks interjected. Yep. Some people even go as far as just doing six, six small meals. Yep. Again, there's no right way. It's about calories in, calories out at the end of the day and your macro mix. Yep. But it's what works for your lifestyle, your cultural, who you are, your ability to control yourself with calories. Yep. I find myself yeah. I want you to say, but when I'm busy, okay, like when I'm, when we sometimes back in 2019 used to office somewhere <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'd leave my house all day. Like I was, I very much a three square meals. I didn't really, I don't really snack that much because like I have my breakfast and I'm so busy working. I love lunch then I'm so busy working. Then I have my dinner and then I'm done. Um, when my kids were little, oh, snacking was really a thing because yeah. kids want to eat. And so then when they want to snack, guess what? You want to snack. And so I really had to get in control of my snacks when I was like around my little kids or when we're on vacation. Yeah, It's really easy to <laughs> snack, 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 snack. So you have to really figure it out for your daily nutrition. I Absolutely. Think. Yeah. yeah. And, and that changes, like you said, like when your kids were younger, it looked completely different then than it does now. So um, let's... Do you snack? Not really. Um, yeah, I'm I, never, of, I never see her snack. Well, I don't see her snack either. We can, I think we're kind of like... <laughs> when we're the, busy during the day, we aren't focused on that. Yeah, yeah. no. Um, but there was the time that like when I was dancing, like I couldn't eat a ton of big meals. Like, And we practice at 6 p.m. And so I would eat smaller meals throughout the day just because I couldn't get super full off of like a big meal. So again, it changes over time and depends on what your day looks like. Yeah, um, yeah. But I do most of the time have like a little snack with me in case I like am really gone all day and I'm like I you know haven't eaten like it but you just always have to have it on hand so yep um do you have like a tracker or, or is there like an app that you use um or would suggest for people to use to kind of educate themselves on the, all of this the best one out there by far is my fitness pal yeah I mean it is the best app out there it really help. it is educational it's so easy to track yeah. you can track calories you can track macros um, it's really a good tracker. And if you want to just do it as a fun trial for a week, two weeks, a month, it, it'll really educate you. You know, the first time, and this was like a decade ago, so we didn't have apps. It was like on, maybe it was even more than a decade ago on paper. But the first time I ever tracked my food, um, and, and especially this was back when my kids were little, it was super eye-opening to me because if I wrote down everything and I was like, oh God, I forgot that I just ate, ate that, that or I forgot <laughs> that I stuck that in there, you know, and I started realizing, wow, I'm eating more than I thought I was eating. So yeah. it is a good practice to try that out. And I think too, like, I mean, I know growing up, I was always like, oh, watch the carbs. But then when you educate yourself on what a healthy carb is, you don't realize I'm kind of the same as Chris, like there are carbs and fruits and veggies and you have I love this, carbs. there's always like this bad stigma over carbs. And until you educate yourself on what a carb is and what, you know, I mean, there are healthy carbs out there. So, well, and you bring up a good point about sugar. So sugar and white flour are, you didn't say sugar, but you said you were talking carbs. Yeah. So sugar and white flour are the two evil carbs. They really are. They are the evil ones that ruin the whole, you know, ruin the whole gang, right? There's always a couple <laughs> of ones that ruin the whole thing. Yeah. So carbs are not evil, but sugar and white flour act the same way in your body. Processed white flour and sugar, immediately your insulin tries to mop it up. 
So picture all, you know, you're releasing all this, and you're trying to mop it up. And if your body can't mop it up all at once because you're flooding your body with too much sugar throughout the day, it is saved as stored as fat. So insulin is really known as the fat storing hormone. And you got to really be careful. So people will think, well, there, there's no sugar in this piece of bread. Well, it's all processed white bread. So yeah, the whole thing is a piece of sugar. That's what it is. <laughs> um, a bowl of cornflakes, mm, there's no sugar in it. Well, guess what? It turns to white sugar in like two seconds in your body. So you're basically eating a bowl of sugar. So, okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is natural sugar is different. Natural sugar is used differently in your body. It is always almost always, I would, maybe even always, combined with fiber, cellulose, other nutrients, and it is used differently in your body. So you do not have to worry about eating a banana and an apple in the same day. That's, there's no problem with that. I've been doing that my whole life. And if that was the cause of obesity, I would be huge because <laughs> I eat that every day. Um, you know, athletes eat bananas like crazy. I can't yeah. tell you the number of people who tell me, oh my gosh, do not eat a banana. It's Everyone says bananas are horrible for you. I'm like, who is everyone? Because they're full of nutrients, potassium, minerals that help deal with muscle cramps. They're convenient. They're easy to carry around with you. Nobody I know says that their overweight problem is due to fruit. I, I've never had anyone say, like, man, I'm such a fruit eater. That's how I got so fat. I mean, I, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. I have a banana at least every day. Every plus day. Plus other fruit on top of it. I know it, you so. don't have to. Like, if you don't like bananas, right. there, you can pick a different fruit, but... Um, Lindsay is asking where I got my laptop cover from, um, Amazon. <laughs> so if you need a link, let me know and I can drop it in the comments a little bit later. I know cause it's new. I noticed it, it. the minute new. I saw, I hadn't seen Sam <laughs> in a couple of weeks. I'm like, when I was out of town, I go, okay, hello. I love your laptop cover. My last one kind of broke. So Amazon, um, back to the topic though. What are your thoughts on monk fruit sweeteners? So it's kind of been new in the marketplace. I've actually been using monk fruit to bake. Yes, you have. Um, and I like it. Like I've been doing some muffins and stuff with monk fruit. Um, mm -hmm. I also like this brand called Simple Mills. They're, Love that brand. Yep, yeah, they're gluten free yes. and they have some really good mixes. If you're kind of in a hurry and want to do it that way, um, I've been using a lot of almond flour. So mm -hmm. I guess I, you know, I did some research on monk fruit. It is a fruit. Um, but here's the thing with all artificial sweeteners is that they are partially processed to some point, unless you're actually using the monk fruit itself, which we aren't. We're using a powder made from monk fruit. So there's always some level of processing in that artificial sweetener. So just be wary. Stevia, monk fruit are kind of the two I'm using right now. To me, the less of the evils in terms of just being a little less processed. But I mean, I'm not kidding myself. I know they're all processed to a point. Yeah. I would stay away from aspartame. There have just been so many studies that show aspartame has issues as well as Splenda, you guys. Splenda is made from um, chlorine. I forget what the, the chemical name is for Splenda, but um, not good. So I'd stay not away good. from that. Um, what are your thoughts on Ezekiel bread? Ezekiel bread is really good for you. It's all sprouted grains. It has to be frozen because, you know, here's the thing. Real food will mold. Yes. Um, real food can't just sit on your counter for three weeks a month and not mold because, you know, bread, meat, fruit, that kind of stuff will mold. If you get a loaf of white bread and stick it on your counter, you can leave it there for four months and nothing will help <laughs> happen to it because it is so processed. So Ezekiel bread is really good. Yeah. Do you, I mean, I have had it. Um, I definitely, um, enjoy it. Like, I mean, I don't have a lot of, yeah, a ton of bread. Yeah, if you're a but... toast eater, to me, that's one of your best choices. Absolutely. Okay, um, let's see. Is there a fruit or veggie that you can eat that gives you the same type of potassium that bananas do? Um, she's allergic to bananas. There are a ton of vegetables that give you a ton of potassium. I want to say an avocado has more potassium than, than a, banana, a banana. I think you're right. From what I know. Um, and then there are some other fruits and vegetables that have um, some amazing amounts of potassium. My brain is just like that. I'm trying to think, do you have any in mind? Um, I was going to say avocado. And to go along with her question, she said suggestion in a replacement of a banana. Um, in, in, a, a, in a protein in smoothie? In a smoothie. And I love avocado. Avocado that is same. totally. And you can't taste it either. I was going to say an avocado is probably your best. I, I love avocado in a smoothie because it's so creamy. It does what a banana so does. Creamy. So creamy. But I will say like a banana, you taste a banana, yep. you won't taste the avocado. It's just like creamy. And at Trader Joe's and at Whole Foods, you can buy quartered yep. frozen 
avocado chips. Yep. And if your avocados are going old, amazing, freeze them quickly um, so that you can use them in your smoothies. Yep. So um, anyway, I'm looking to see uh, which high, which food is highest in potassium. Okay, bananas, Banana. as we said, but oranges and cantaloupe. Cantaloupe was the other one I was oh. thinking of. Um, spinach, broccoli, sweet potatoes. I mean, here, here's the beauty of fruits and vegetables. They're loaded with nutrients. Yes, you know. Um, uh, let's see. What about protein bars? Um, many have too much sugar. Any thoughts on protein bars? Oh, protein bars <laughs> are a drag because they are highly processed. Yeah. It's hard to find one that isn't super processed. Um, I'm just trying to think of some of the brands. Like, I know people talk about RX bars. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm allergic to nuts, so I just can't you do don't eat bars. protein bars. I'm not a fan of RX bars. I, I, they're like thin. I don't know. They bug me. <laughs> they bug me. Um, yeah. Bars are a problem. So I like these bars that are made from, it's called Go Raw is the brand. Yep. And all the ingredients are raw. And, um, but it's been really weird because I used to find them in Whole Foods and they stopped Then I would buy them on Amazon. And now it's very strange. Like they're very limited on Amazon. And if you can find them, they're outrageously priced, like outrageously. So you can tell like something's going on with supply and demand. Yep. So it's kind of a bummer. Um, there is one or two flavors of these Go Raw bars that you can get on Amazon. Yep. And they're just nuts and seeds and like dates, you know, wh which is a natural sugar. Um, so I like those. I, I make my own protein. When my kids were little, I always made my own protein bars. And we Ooh. have the recipes on gethealthyyou.com. Um, we had the chocolate peanut butter ones and the apple cinnamon ones. And I literally made them <laughs> all the time in these huge bat batches and I would wrap them in wax paper and freeze them yep. so they wouldn't go bad. And my kids would grab them out of the freezer and eat them. Um, they had puffed wheat in them, which is kind of processed, you know. Mm -hmm. You could substitute it for something different if you wanted, but for kids it was good. Anyway, bars bars are an issue. Absolutely, they, they really are. Um, the bars that Chris was just talking about that she liked, I did drop that in the comments if anyone is looking for the good. ones that you can find on Amazon. So. Um, if you notice me typing, it is in the comments. <laughs> um, let's see. What can you do to reduce some of the unpleasant side effects of eating like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, et cetera? Because you have to kind of ease into it. You do. <laughs> I've had problems. Cruciferous vegetables are very, I mean, a lot of people say they get bloated, they get gas, they get a, a discomfort in their stomach. You have to ease into eating a lot of cruciferous vegetables. So don't just start eating broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts every day. You're literally going to die. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. But don't do it. <laughs> ease into it. But cruciferous vegetables are so healthy. They're anti-cancer. Um, they're great for immunity. They've got a ton of, uh, a ton of um, uh, nutrients. Start by cooking them. So they're, if you don't, I mean, when the raw is that probably the hardest on your system. Yeah. I eat, I ate raw cauliflower and broccoli before I came here. I mean, like I love <laughs> cruciferous vegetables, but that being said, start by cooking, by roasting. I'm, I roast all the time. We put, I'm yeah. always putting it on Instagram stories. I put a little olive oil on some spices and roast it in my uh, convection oven, which is like an air fryer. Yep. And they're amazing. Um, so definitely start out that way, then ease into them. Don't eat them all at once, <laughs> but your body will learn to digest them. And they are so incredibly healthy for you. Yeah. And literally like these, these, uh, vegetables like cauliflower, broccoli, spinach, cabbage, like they have so few calories, knock yourself out and eat as much as you want. <laughs> yes. I have definitely, my sister and I have to, um, we love like Brussels sprouts, um, broccoli, all of that stuff, but I have to be very careful on how much I eat because sometimes we're laying on the floor and we're like, what is happening? So ease your way into it because yeah. it, it's definitely worth it, but just don't overdo it. Um, let's see. Okay. We have Sharon asking what the difference between, um, collagen, powder when mixed with water and liquid collagen are they both the same drinks and both digestible the same way they're all different every brand is different <laughs> some are powdered some are liquid i couldn't really tell you that I do, I, it depends on the brand i've seen a lot about this liquid collagen online lately so people are I. selling it through network marketing i have no idea like how that collagen is or what's mixed with it i don't know if they've got sugars added to it to make it taste better i have no idea the powdered is great. Vital mm -hmm. proteins, uh, 
uh, what NeoCell, those are just two of the brands that come to mind right away. You can add them to your coffee, to your yogurt, to your um, tea, to your cottage cheese, to I don't know, whatever you're eating. You can also just mix them with water and eat them. Yep. I tend to stick with the pills a lot because I'm always putting, and I probably could go back to adding a scoop of collagen into my protein shake. Yep. Because I would always do like a, a scoop of protein powder and a scoop of collagen. Mm -hmm. um, but I just started taking the pills at night because I keep them right next to my sink in my bathroom and I just remember to take them. And then, and I do think they make a difference. Like my menopausal skin, I do. I mean, there are times where I'm like, I don't take it for like five days. Like if I've gone somewhere and forgot to bring it with me. And I do notice that I have a more breakouts. Now, this is just me, like weird hormonal breakouts when I don't take my collagen. collagen. Um, sorry, I am putting blogs in here as Chris is talking. <laughs> you are a fast typer, Sam. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, let's see. How much sugar is too much? How can you indulge in a few treats? Like what number do you kind of stay around? So here's the thing. The government was going to change permanently, like literally back in 2000. 18, the uh, food labels to have to mandatory include added sugars. And then they kept backing off, backing off. I mean, it's also political. It makes me sick. Um, but somehow the FDA just keeps having to, they don't have to do it. But lots of companies just started doing it. They started putting added sugars on so that like, let's say you're buying a yogurt. You could see if it has 20 sugars, but only 10 of them are added, you would know that 10 of them are naturally occurring due to the dairy product. So added sugars are what you're trying to avoid. The recommended daily allowance is 24 grams or less per day. So 24 grams, and there are four grams in a teaspoon. Uh, in a teaspoon, and so that would be six teaspoons of added sugar. Now, when you think of it that way, nobody's going to go in their sugar bowl and take six teaspoons of sugar. That's so much sugar, right? <laughs> but it gets in your food, and you don't know you're eating it. There's yep. added sugars added to everything because let's face it. The best tasting food has sugar and salt in it. Yep. The two things together, sugar and salt is addicting. It is like yum, yum, yum. So you kind of have to keep track. So it's kind of an interesting exercise to keep track of your added sugars. See if you're going over the 24 gram mark. And here's the thing, like, okay, 80, 20 rule, right? Like I am a Starbucks person. <laughs> I love it. But Starbucks drinks, they are high, high, high in sugar. The ones with all the syrups. The new pistachio drink is ridiculous. It's so delicious. But it's literally like 60 grams of sugar, something oh, totally nuts. Wow. Um, I love the vanilla sweet cream. That's kind of the one I will allow myself every so often. But that is like 30 grams of sugar. Um, I know they're mochas and they're locas and they're all those things, those frappos. Those can be upwards of 90 grams of added sugar. So you really have to be careful and be thoughtful. Yeah. Indulge when you want to indulge and don't look back. It's okay to have an indulgence every so often. But you can go to Starbucks and ask for only one pump of flavor sweetener instead of the five that they <laughs> put in. Or you can ask for the vanilla sweet cream, only half of it instead of the whole serving. So, you know, you kind of have to be your own advocate. And it is good to keep track of your added sugar. It is a very interesting um, exercise. Absolutely. You just touched on it, and we do have a question about it, um, talking about the 80-20 rule. And we have a member saying, I'm worried that my 20 gets skewed sometimes. So what does your 20 look like? Well, to me, like my 20 is... So it, it kind of depends. Like, do you want to do 80-20 every day or do you want to do 80-20 throughout your week? Yep. Like, I'm pretty clean throughout my week. Like, if I'm not going anywhere, you know, like if I have a social event, I'm going out with girlfriends on a Thursday night. Okay, well, then things are different. But if I'm like not going out during the week and just kind of living my life, I'm pretty diligent about having my, I usually have a protein shake. People are always like, what do you eat during the day, right? People want to know Okay, let's go through it. Let's go Chris through it. Why do you want to know what I eat? God. <laughs> um, but I typically eat a protein shake. So I get up in the morning. I typically work out early before I eat. So if I'm going to do a 5.30 a.m. workout, I get up, I get like a half a cup of coffee because like if I don't have it, I think I'm going to die. So I have my half a cup of coffee <laughs> and I usually eat a half a banana. And the reason I say a half a banana is because for some reason, I don't know, in Minnesota, the bananas at our grocery stores They're are big. So large. They're huge. <laughs> I only need like a half a banana. So I'll take that in the car if I'm driving to the gym or if I'm going to work out in my basement, I will just do my coffee and my banana. That gives me a little bit of um, glucose, like converted natural sugar in my body. I put a noon tablet, which is potassium, sodium, and magnesium. It looks like an Alka-Seltzer. I throw it in my water. Give me a little energy. Boom, I work out. After my workout, 
shower, protein shake. My typical protein shake, typical, not always, lately has been banana, blueberry, pro, uh, peanut butter powder, because I'm allergic to real peanut butter, but the peanut butter powder has less calories, and for yep. some reason, I don't break out from it. Yep. So I love that peanut butter and jelly combo. I always put the banana or the avocado in for creaminess. Yep. Um, if I use a banana, then I'll put chia seeds. If I use an avocado, I skip the chia seeds just from the amount of fat going in. Almond milk, maybe an ice cube or two, and a scoop of Bipro Elite Protein Powder. <laughs> I'll throw some pumpkin seeds and some pistachios in it, and that's my breakfast till lunch. For lunch, I typically eat during the winter, I tend to do a lot of roasted veggies, and then I make a ton extra. So like if you follow me on Instagram, I was showing my, I have an extra large cookie sheet, so I'll, I will roast a ton of veggies, and then my husband and I have them for the week. I'll mm -hmm. do sweet potatoes, uh, broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, um, what did I just, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Um, I'm not, the only vegetable I honestly don't like, green beans. I don't know why, but I just don't like them. <gasps> no, I don't hey. like them. Um, them. Red peppers, I'll do stuff like that. And then I'll typically for lunch have roasted sweet potato, roasted veggies, and I'll throw in a protein, whether it's some like leftover fish from the week or leftover chicken chunks. I'll throw something like that in or a hard boiled egg or whatever I do there. Um, I'll typically put like, I love this um, peanut sauce that I buy at the grocery store and it does have some added sugar. So that might be part of my 20 because <laughs> I just love that Thai peanut flavor. But sometimes I just eat raw veggies and I dip it in hummus. Like in the summertime, I'll eat more raw veggies than I do carrots, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and then I'll snack sometimes on popcorn or nuts and seeds. I usually have a, a Greek yogurt too. I was going to say, yep, I, feel like I usually that's... do have a Greek yogurt. It depends in the afternoon. It just depends. And then, and I drink my coffee in the morning. I used to be able to drink coffee all day. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> and then at night, typically the same thing my husband and I will do veggies and protein. And then we will add, like, he loves pasta. So we've been making pasta that is made out of chickpeas. Chickpeas. So good. So good. Did yes. You, yeah. That's so good. so good. And so we've been doing chickpea pasta and lentil pasta, um, which is really good. I do a ton of quinoa where we mix it and we'll make like a bowl where it's like quinoa, veggies, protein, yep. and we'll put a little hummus in there, mix it up. Um, we do greens and grains a lot. Mm -hmm. We do taco salad a lot, like that kind of thing. And then after dinner, I'll either have like some dark chocolate with my Organifi tea. I'll have some Halo Top <laughs> frozen, whatever it's <laughs> called. See, that's probably not the best thing for me, but I, I like it. Um, and so that's kind of my typical day. I typically eat, I think, around 2,000 to 2,200 calories. And then on the weekend, though, I'll have a couple glasses of wine. I'll, um, you know, go out to dinner and I'll eat things that maybe aren't perfect. So my 80-20 feels more like 90 during the week. And then yeah. I give myself that the weekend. the weekend break. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now I exercise, so I am burning about 500 to 800 calories a day based on activity, doing my typical one hour workout, which usually I burn about 400 plus calories. And then um, I usually walk the dog, not today because it's horrible here, but like, <laughs> let's just say I walk 300 out of the 365 days or something, yeah. then I get another couple hundred calories there. So remember, calories in, calories out. If I didn't work out and I didn't walk the dog, I'd probably gain weight. Yeah. Thank goodness for that dog. Yeah, right. Um, did she that answer the question? Though? Yes, it, it most certainly. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it did, but um, let's see. Really quickly, will you touch on um, the brand of the chai tea that you mentioned earlier? Uh huh. It's called Organifi. Organ, like O R G A N I F I. Um, they have a really good website. If you go to their website, it tells about who they are. This Drew Canal, Canal, I think his name is, who started it. Um, they partnered with like the Truth About Cancer years ago, and they just everything about their products are natural, but they're very pricey. I want to say a container of the Organifi Gold is like fifty something dollars, yeah. and you get thirty servings, so you don't want to waste it. <laughs> On Amazon, I've been ordering it on Amazon, but I'm going to be honest, it's more, it's been it's more way more on Amazon lately. Yeah. I'm kind of upset about it. I need to look into that. So. Um, I'm, I might switch to subscription on Organifi yeah. because it's like $20 less a container, which is ridiculous. But anyway, I love that tea. Look into their products. They really are a good company. Um, a little switch of topic, just a little bit. Um, I like to do cardio and strength training on most days. How long should you be doing? 
So the CDC has gotten smart over the years. And, you know, back when I was a kid, I remember the messaging. There used to be PSAs on the television that were like, Americans need to exercise for an hour a day. You know, it was kind of like a joke because nobody did it. Um, and so the CDC finally said, like, we're not going to tell you how long to exercise. We're going to tell you what to do in the course of a week. And you decide, based on your busy life, what works best for you. So 150 minutes of heart pumping exercise is recommended a week. That's two and a half hours of heart pumping exercise. Heart pumping exercise is breathing through your mouth, not through your nose. So if you're in yoga class breathing through your nose, yoga class is amazing for mental, for for mental health, for stretching, for flexibility, but it's not a cardio class. So you want to get that heart pumping. Are you going to walk the dog? Are you going to climb steps? Are you going to do indoor walking with Sam and I? Are you going to do Get Healthy UTV workouts? Are you going to a gym? Are you bike riding? Like there are so many, are you swimming, dancing? So many ways to get your heart rate up. If you like to dance, you definitely need to check out the latest dance workout with Sam on Get Healthy UTV. It is adorable. Like adorable. Okay. But that being said, that's your cardio. Then strength training, the CDC says, two total body strength training sessions a week. You decide how and when. So no longer is it do a leg day, do an arm day. It's just use all your muscles in your body twice a week. It doesn't even tell you how long. Nope. But Sam and I will tell you, go to muscle fatigue, where you feel the point, like where you're like, oh, I can barely do another one. And you're breaking down those muscles so that you can fuel them properly and build them up. So you kind of have to for perfectionists or for type A people, that's a little like, oh, you're not telling me what exactly to do. But I really got into the swing of when I first started lifting weights back in the 90s, I uh, divided my body up leg day, arm day, chest day, core, like, because that's all I knew. And that's all that was out there in the media. Then I started getting like, oh, I like to do classes where I go up and down on the step and I lift weights and started combining my workouts together. Yep. And now I tend to do, and I, know, I think, Sam, you do the same, total body workouts all the time. Yeah. Like I don't just say, oh, today is arm day or leg day. But that being said, we're in the middle of doing a series of split, split day. days yep. for Get Healthy UTV because sometimes people do like that. Maybe throughout the year you want to do a couple – uh, weeks of split days where you do leg day, arm day, chest day, that kind of thing. So we do have those workouts for you. There just aren't any rules. You just have to do what feels right. But 150 minutes of heart pumping exercise, so many people don't get that. Yeah, no. Like they're like, oh yeah, I do cardio. Then they're like, wait, two and a half hours? Wait, I have to be breathing through my mouth? Wait, that's a lot. That's a lot, right? yeah. Yeah, so. And I think there's something too about like switching up what you do all the time. Like, I mean, do heavy weights and then go walk, you know, do different things. Um, I love like actually when you were gone, adding a little more Pilates into my routine. You go girl. Um, just because, well, and I do teach it, but then Chris comes back and I want to do her classes again. So um, <laughs> it is one of those things. Just kind of switch it up and see what your body likes. If you love swimming, go swimming, right? Well, and when I was in Arizona, you know, I typically go for a month every year yeah. to visit family and my parents and we, my husband and I work there. Um, well, you, we do different workouts. Like I was hiking primarily for my cardio. I yeah. wasn't doing my usual get healthy UTV. I did do some of them, yep. but I was doing a lot of hiking, which gosh, that's, that's hard. <laughs> my heart rate would get way up there and I'd be like, whoo, man, you know, so it's good to change it up. It is. Um, somebody, uh, Christy is asking, so doing a total body workout, do you ever get a full leg or an arm workout? Um, so I don't divide my body up like that very often. Yeah. I mean, we do have a lot of lower body workouts on Get Healthy UTV because you guys just love them. And, <laughs> you know, Shelly has done a couple of them where they're just butt burns, they are I'm telling killer. you. <laughs> um, and we do have, like, I just, um, this Friday for you gold members, it's going to be shoulder by tri day. It is. Yep. So I just, um, that'll be my workout. Um, so I do like that, but I just tend to do total body workouts. That's just my favorite. And I feel the most accomplished from it. But again, like I said, there's no right way. By the way, for all of you Get Healthy UTV members, um, if you are a premium member, you get two new workouts a month. If you are a gold member, you get two new workouts a week. In addition to the premium, you also get the premium. So, you know, obviously we love the gold membership because you are getting a ton of variety. Sam and I sit and plan the gold workouts. And we're like, okay, what should we do in May? <laughs> and we listen to you guys in the Facebook group. You guys will recommend, you know, you know do another BOSU workout. Check, we've got it on the calendar. So we listen to you guys and we create all of these gold workouts. But the premium workouts... Um, we just started releasing them differently. We used to release them in blocks. Now we're doing two a month. So you guys constantly have new content. 
Most recent, um, let's see, we have three that we're going to kind of preview we're a little bit of. We're going to B-roll too. Um, yep. yep, we're going to, okay, so this one right here is called Chair Mobility. Yes. This is a recovery workout. Sheila and I did this workout. Sheila is way more flexible than me. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Sheila. Um, but this was a fun workout for those of you who might be injured. Yeah. Uh, for your seniors, we have some member who put up the cutest pictures of her mom oh, doing the, the, the chair mobility. Thing. This is dumbbell hit with Shelly. This is brand new. Sam and I are in the background dying. Yep. <laughs> um, this was a Tabata workout as well as um, some other intervals, and I was the modifier. This is kick butt kickboxing, my favorite. My go-to workout is always kickboxing. I love it. This is just my favorite of our kickboxing. We were just having a blast. We were having a blast, and I kind of feel like we need to do another one. I know. We're going to put one on the <laughs> schedule. So that was, these are three brand new premium workouts. If you haven't checked them out yet, um, I have to laugh. Someone's like, oh, Chris, did you cut your bangs? I'm like, no, I just cleaned my hair. You washed your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's always pulled back. It never looks like that. Anyway, so just some fun for you guys. Um, this coming month, we have a walking workout we're, we're doing and a strength workout. And a bar workout. Oh, bar workout. Sorry. Uh, yep. The strength workout isn't in until June, but get ready. So if you are premium members, go look, okay? Because we're constantly adding those. We do send out an email at the end of the month that says, hey, here's your two new workouts. Yep. We do talk about it in the Facebook group. So be uh, aware. And typically when you open the website, the new workout is going to appear. The new workout is right there. Yep. So you'll see it. Um, quickly, I mean, I can't even believe we're running out of time. I want to talk about what snacks. Did yeah. people ask like what snacks? Um, yes, yeah, some people are asking like quick, easy, healthy snacks. Let's talk about that because that kind of was like something where I'm like, I want to remember some of these and, and talk to you guys about them. So, okay, if you want like 100 calorie snacks, summertime fruit, 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 fruit. I mean, fruit is water. Watermelon is like 90% mm -hmm. water. Cantaloupe and honeydew, 90% water. Like knock yourself out and eat them. But literally you can eat like a half a cantaloupe for 100 calories. Are you kidding me? So eat your fruit. Berries are unbelievable. A full cup of berries is a lot of berries, you guys. You can eat a full cup of berries for 100 calories, a half a cup of grapes for 100 calories, half an avocado. Um, a sweet potato, a small sweet potato is only like 100 calories. A lot of people would be like, oh, I'm not going to eat a whole sweet potato for a snack, but I'll eat a whole bag of chips for a snack, <laughs> right? You know, so there's the difference. Um, popcorn, three cups of popcorn. Typically, three cups of good popcorn um, are 100 calories. Air popcorn, why would you eat that? <laughs> it tastes like cardboard. Like, it is not sad. I'm always like, wait, what, you air popped your popcorn? Oh my, I remember doing that in college and we used to then spritz water on it water. to try to get the, because uh, you know, that was, I grew up in the fat free era. When I went to college, oh, yeah. you were not supposed to eat fat. So we'd take air popcorn, we'd spritz it with water and then quickly put on the salt and quickly put it in our mouth because it would just melt. It would turn to like nastiness. <laughs> Disgusting. So Disgusting. unsatisfying. <laughs> Knock yourself out with some olive oil in your popcorn. It's delicious. Um, Let's see, any kind of veggie, you can eat a cup, two cups, three cups, four cups. You're never going to hit 100 calories of, of broccoli. It's going to take you a lot. It's going to take you an entire bag of broccoli to get to 100 calories. But maybe you eat a cup of it with two tablespoons of hummus. Yep. You know, and then you've got that yummy mix or a little bit of guac. An egg is only about 60 calories, you guys, a hard boiled egg full of really good nutrients and protein. Um, a tablespoon of peanut butter, almond butter, they're going to be about 80 calories. Take some baby carrots or a sliced up apple and add that. Um, a, a half cup of trail mix or like a quarter cup to a, a third cup to a half cup of trail mix. That's going to be a, a really good snack. Measure it out. Don't eat out of the bag of trail mix because you'll eat the whole thing. Don't eat out of the bag of popcorn, which is my downfall, because you'll eat the whole thing. So measuring it out makes a difference. Greek yogurt, I love Greek yogurt because it's thicker. Some people like a thinner yogurt, but like some yogurt with some berries in it. So good. Yum. What are your go-to if you're going to eat a snack? Um, I snack a lot on um, fruits and veggies as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Do you do any like crackers stuff? Not, I mean. I, see, she's too good. I do. I like, I like hip peas. Have you guys ever seen hip peas no. in the grocery store? H-I-P-P-E-A-S. Redonkulous. They're so delicious. They're made of garbanzo beans. I have not heard they're of that. Like <laughs> they're like Cheetos. They're like Cheetos. They're so good. 
Um, Chris, we have a few people asking, did you mention menopausal skin? You can't possibly be at that age range, <laughs> but can you please um, explain? What happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm 55. I went through menopause at 50. I was young. Like my older sister, who is, um, she's almost five years older than me. She's not 60 yet. Maybe this summer. Um, <laughs> but she went through menopause like five years after me. So really? everybody is totally different. Yep. But I just noticed in my late 40s, I had the weirdest thing going on. I had these white pustules all through here. So it wasn't zits. I, I, like it wasn't acne. I could tell like it was different than teen yep, acne. Then, but they were yeah. literally, I don't want to gross anyone out, but they were like literally white pustules. So when you sit in a magnifying mirror, like I could pop them like yeah. it's disgusting and then i started getting like um when you looked in the side view like in the sunlight i had like underground bumps oh those are gorgeous. and i was like this i like i i was never even an acne sufferer as a teenager so mm -hmm. i was like what's going on i knew it was getting bad because i was always wearing a baseball cap and then this was the telltale when i decided i needed help was i wanted to put makeup on before going to the gym I never put, who puts makeup on before going to the gym and i was like oh i just want to cover this up yeah and so then i was like this isn't good. And then even one of my younger sisters was like, ooh, what's that? <laughs> so I went to my derm and my derm said, I have no idea. Because dermatologists, they just want acne or, I mean, they don't get into the menopausal stuff. So yeah. I started doing my own research. I started digging deep because I was like, I know this is hormonal. I came upon a whole bunch of blogs of people talking about the same problem I had. Plus, I was thinking I was getting rosacea. I was turning kind of red. Mm -hmm. Wait, it was a mess. <laughs> um, and so, after, long story short, after a ton of research, reading people's blogs, getting information about the fact that this was menopause at work, I read about collagen. That's when I started taking my collagen, which was about eight, seven, eight years ago, um, that collagen could make a difference for menopausal skin problems. Um, and then I came upon a skincare program, which Sam and I always put on our Instagram stories, yeah. and I'll do it again, called ZenMed, Z-E-N-M-E-D. And it's like not tested on animals. And I don't know, at one point, I think they said like vegan, but I don't get vegan for your skin, but whatever. Bottom line is it's really good botanical ingredients. And I started using their support serum. It's super cheap. It's like 25 bucks. And my, my face cleared up overnight. overnight. Oh, the best. It was both my... Um, the collagen and the Zen Med. And so I was like, okay. So bottom line is I haven't stopped using either. I did have a weird bout in November of this year, first time in a long time where I was like, what's going on? And I tried to figure out if it was food, but I'm pretty sure it was just my skin reacting to, I don't know if it was the cold hormonal change again. Um, and I started using one other Zen Med um, lotion called their Rose Hip and Licorice. I know it sounds crazy. It's all natural <laughs> stuff. And that was a little thicker for the winter. That really worked for me. Okay. That being said, I also found out I was eating a lot of histamines um, because a lot of healthy food has histamines. I was eating a ton of like fruits that had histamines. I was eating um, avocado, tons of spinach at the point. That was a time when I was just like eating spinach and all of my protein shakes, peanuts, which I can no longer eat peanuts, period. Um, and so I did do some research that said too many histamines will create a reaction. And so what I did is I went, oh, and red wine was one of them, which is totally depressing because <laughs> um, I love red wine. So I, um, bottom line is I started uh, like hit or, like changing that up, getting rid of them and then adding one thing back at a time. And really spinach and peanuts were the two things that really bugged me the most. Um, okay, so that's it for that. Hey, we just had up a little banner. Yep. I'm sorry, I was talking through it about 10 foods that blast belly fat. Yep. It's a question you guys ask all the time. Now, you guys know me, I'm a realist. There's nothing that blasts belly fat. Like you can't eat celery and lose belly fat. You can't take a pill and lose belly fat. But eating healthier will help as long as you're also doing the other things like drinking water, sleeping, and getting rest. And keeping your insulin and your cortisol in check. Those are the two hormones that create this uh, fat storage in the belly. That being said, eating the right nutrients will help control your insulin secretion and your cortisol. And so it's foods like berries and healthy fishes. And you had the list just yep. up there of um good stuff so download it's a download you guys it's yep. free so if you go to this will it be on our yep it's um in the comments on okay. facebook we'll get it on um that's just one more little treat for you guys yes. for listening 
all the way to the end of this hour. Absolutely. Any one last question? We're like almost done here. Um, let's see. The, I mean, we have so many questions, you guys. So if we missed you, um, I will go back in the comments and answer any of them that we can. Um, choo -choo -choo -choo. Uh, you're full of working from home. Any tips to break up the day with movement? What's your, uh, what's your top tip? Working from home, <laughs> WFH. Who knew that would become a thing? A thing. Um, I, I say you have to break up. You know, I love my watch because it tells me to stand, stand up. up. I do stand up, sit down throughout the day. So I sit like at my kitchen counter on a stool and then I'll stand. I have a um, stand for my laptop. Sam... We, Sam and I, so my Instagram, I call it my Instagram, but it's really our Instagram because she helps me put up a lot. And um, we put up Amazon finds every Friday. We'll put it up this Friday. Yeah. I have a little stand for my laptop. It was like 15 bucks, but it just elevates it so that when I stand at my count, kitchen counter, it's the perfect height for my computer. So sit, stand, sit, stand, get your workout. Like I like to do my workout. I mean, yesterday Sam came over to my house and we did, did our Get Healthy You TV workout in the morning. And we had some people, they were like, we love that this is real life, that you guys like work out together. I'm in like, my yeah, basement. We do. <laughs> yep. In with my dog laying there. Yep. And so we did our workout in the morning. And then typically like in the afternoon, I will try to get a walk in. Not today because it's just crummy weather here. But I'll walk the dog. We'll walk and talk. Yep. Even a walking meeting. Yep. can um, really be useful. And so yesterday, Chris said, you know, I just really want to do a cartwheel. I'm like still replaying that in my mind. I did say um, that. So maybe just get up and do some cartwheels. And I did. I didn't do it. No, you didn't. So maybe I was like, later. I feel like doing a cartwheel. I watched something on Instagram and I was like, am I too old to do a cartwheel? Like, will my body do it anymore? <laughs> I'm going to, I am going to test it, but I'm definitely not going to do it around any front. Like, Cartwheels used to be my gig. And now I'm afraid I'm going to like knock into We've got furniture. A large space. All right. right I'm going to try it off so. camera. Um, yeah, we are out of time. There are still questions rolling in. So again, we'll get to them. Um, um, people giving us suggestions on more workouts. We'll add them to the you list. Guys, you guys are hilarious. I love <laughs> your suggestions. So, you know, with two gold workouts a week, it is giving us a lot of variety. More, however, and we have so some many. fun stuff, you know, coming up, but even so the, the, <laughs> It fills up so fast because yep. like we're through May planning and yep. we're like, oh, we still we have to add in to this. this. Oh, we got to add in that, you know, and um, same with uh, our um, premium. So we're taking your thoughts to heart. Yes. Like one of the things that Sam and I love is pyramid power. So pyramid is just such a fun to me format. I've been doing it literally probably for eight years every Tuesday. Like that's yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. If you say Tuesday, I say pyramid power. Pyramid power. <laughs> um, and so we're going to give you a few extras of those because premiums only have one. Golds have Four. We got a lot of stuff coming yeah. down the pipeline. Yep. So, okay. my gosh, an hour goes by so fast. Thanks to our production people who sit there and listen to us <laughs> for an hour. You guys are awesome. Thanks to all of you at home or at work or wherever you might be. This is really fun for us. Sam and I enjoy coming live. Last, who did we have with us last time? Shelly? Shelly was with us. We missed last trainer month, Shelly. two months ago. Yep. Yeah. So, we have some fun stuff coming up for you with our trainers. Um, fun stuff coming up with our workouts. We'll be back again next month with uh, another Q and A, and we're always open to ideas too of yeah. things that you guys want to talk about. We're here for you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.